welcome back to the electric supercar channel. Last week we had uh, most everything figured out, but we were missing a washer and a nut. So uh, we're still waiting to source and find that and get it here. So in the meantime, we're gonna be working on a few other things and let's see if we can get this up and running. All right, so I'm uh, sourcing and waiting arrival of our nut and washer. So I gotta figure out a couple other things to work on. So I'm gonna start with the uh, steering wheel, uh, doing the quick release hub adapter. All right, I'm just uh, adding some wires here to my quick release hub adapter for the steering wheel. So getting it working. All right, um, I've got it all assembled. Um, I'm gonna now try and do the uh, quick disconnect. And get in and out. Um, I think it will be a little bit easier when the car's on the ground with weight because right now when I go to try and pivot the steering wheel the whole it, the rack just everything just wants to move because there's tires on them aren't on the ground so I think this will be easier once tires are on the ground but uh, let's go ahead and put it back in. Again, I probably made it look a lot more difficult than it is, but like I said, I think when the car's on the ground, it'll be easier. All right, I was gonna try out the horn, so let's see how it works. Okay. So far, so good. Oh my gosh, that's loud. Okay, now let's try taking it off. Okay, put it back on. Okay. My passive keyless entry is giving me grief. Um, it keeps disconnecting even when, uh, even when that's in range. So, um, I'm gonna have to get into my 12 volt systems and I'll just bypass it so I can uh, get this thing moving. All right, this is a question, I think for EV controls, um, not quite sure what's going on. So when I turn on my car, this one tries to boot up, but it, but it kind of kicks things off when the, uh, contactors try and go on. So it just keeps on going through this loop. Boom. Boom. So any help would be greatly appreciated. All right, we're gonna start this up again today. Got the voltmeter there to see uh, if we can see what's going on. I don't know, I mean, it seems like we got plenty of voltage. All right, well, I can't find anything wrong with the battery, with any of my uh, relays or anything. So I'm gonna have to dig back in here to my high voltage box to, uh, again, try and get some readings and see if I can figure out what's going on. So in order to gain access, just have more room to work, I'm probably going to just take out both seats that I put in, um, but it should be pretty easy taking them in and out. But uh, yeah, get the lid off and then try and look at the wiring and voltages. So I don't really know what to do with this guy cycling on and off and uh, not working. So um, a little disappointing, but we will try and find some other things to work on um, and hopefully we can get this thing working so we can get the first drive in. But we'll go ahead and uh, probably start mounting the tires and see if there's a couple other odds and ends we can, uh, we can do. All right, I've gotta make this a uh, little more roadworthy. So I've got just um, wires and things, so like this is all for headlights. 
Um, I just got to get things and kind of secure them out of the way. So when I do my first drive that I don't have like cords and other things dangling or falling on the road or causing other hazards. So for the front, I, like I said, I think I've just got the, uh, for the headlights, turn signals, things like that. I, I think duct tape might be my friend here. I'll just tape things out of the way. Um, and I've got, again, just more cables and things I got to secure. So this whole box is like all the rear lighting stuff. So I got to get that secured. This here. But not too much. The other thing, got to get my tires mounted. Shouldn't take too long. Got to get seats put back in. So yeah, there's uh, quite a few things I need to do. So we'll get on it. All right, so I've been uh, trying to get things out of the way. So I've got all my wires here for headlights and things taped down on uh, both sides and just other places where things are kind of loose. Again, a lot of the door wiring and things taped down and here in the back. So again, my BMS wires, kind of tail wiring harness, things like that. So I think we've got things mostly secured. So I think it's about time to put the wheels on and see see what the next problems are. I got the tires all mounted. So we'll put them on the car. If you squint just right, that's what it'll look like. I got all the uh, center caps on and we're looking to uh, mount now. I really don't know where to start with the uh, adjustments here. So both just uh, this guy as well as this one. Um, we'll just try and make sure they're both the same um, as far as the rear goes. And when we lower it, then we'll figure out uh, what needs to change. All right, I was all ready to put this on and I'm, I'm just not sure. I've got uh, some lug bolts for up here. This was made for like an Audi, like European Audi. And I believe they use a ball seat. And I think I've got cone seats. I am I just have to double check with the uh, Forge Star to see what they made for me, if this is ball seat or cone seat. Um, so shoot, we will, I, I'm, we're certain on the back, so we're good there. All right, I have the back wheels officially mounted. Show you a closer look here. Um, I'll show you some of the clearance, the close clearances. So on this side, we're close, but um, again, it, it goes in here. So we've got like a couple fingers. Um, and I think this is actually gonna be the worst case when the wheel's down, so when it's up, I think it should be a little kind of further away. And this is a 19 inch wheel. And it's close, I don't know if you can see it, close here. But again, that should be all kind of somewhat fixed relative. All right, after about a week and a half, finally got the uh, nut and washer. So we can uh, mount it on the suspension and then drop the car in the ground. Again, there's the uh, back wheels. So you kind of on both sides here. So uh, as I mentioned, the front wheels were just uh, kind of waiting confirmation to see if they were uh, kind of a cone seat or ball seat, how they were made. 
I am underneath the car. I am jacking up the back here. Um, I'm going to take it off the jack stands and see uh, as it rests on its suspension if we have any other problems that come. This will be the first time that the rear is off the jack stands since we put it here. All right, it is off the jack stands. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and lower it and check and lower it and check until the whole weight of the car is on the suspension. But uh, I'm half expecting uh, a clearance problem or something else to bend or snap, I don't know. But we'll, we'll go slow. Okay, here it is uh, loaded, uh, sitting on its wheel. This is, I believe, the, I don't know how you want to describe it, the lowest setting, kind of lowrider type setting. So uh, this, this is fairly um, even, fairly level. If anything, it's pivoted up just a titch. So um, that's, that's exactly what we want. Um, again, we're, we're close in several places, but again, I think uh, sitting it on its wheel actually gave it more room here. Um, it is interesting though, the, the whole way the suspension works, it, it just, uh, anyways, there's some things that are just unique, just how it kind of moves. So uh, we do have a close place, not this arm, but the next arm up. It's a close place with the frame, so I'll probably come up here and kind of give it some wiggles and see if it touches, you know, kind of jump on it a little bit. We'll keep looking at it. Um, I will wait to get the front wheels on to, again, balance the height. Um, see, again, I don't want the level of the car to be kind of like it's shown here. Again, I don't think it will be, but I also don't want it to be pitched down. So when I get the front wheels uh, figured out, I'll mount them and see where they sit and try and uh, level everything out. All right, getting back to the uh, that system there, cycling, clicking on and off. All right, so I disconnected, what is that, 86? So that's uh, pin M, and that kind of broke the cycle and it seemed to fire up and everything's fine, which is interesting because I don't think this thing should start without that. So it makes me wonder if the uh, relay is bad. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and plug it back in and see if it does the same thing and then we'll uh, go from there. Alright, so I plugged it back in and now it seems to be started up fine. So I'll relay this information to EV controls, see if they've got any thoughts. Uh, but it just seems like something was in a loop, like uh, something it couldn't get out of. So I, again, I don't know if it was relay loop or contactor loop or something just seems like something was out of sequence and now we're we're good all right that's all the time we have for this week see you next week